Uh, mm. Tracy, you want to get us started? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Kevin. Uh, Good afternoon. Your memory of that play last year on the Buffalo side, they claim Josh Allen slipped on that fourth and, and short uh, from the Tennessee side. Uh, seems pretty sure that Jeff, Big Jeff, was in the middle there helping cause him to slip and fall. Uh, what was your viewpoint and, and how big of a moment in that game was I, obviously it helped turn the game, but how big of a moment was it for this team? And in that moment, what do you remember that play? Yeah, I think it was a combination of both. I mean, he did slip a little bit, but Jeff blew the guy up in the backfield. And I think he would have made the play regardless if he slipped or not. That was a huge play. That was one of the, probably the most memorable moment I've had in Nissan stadium. You know, just thinking about the atmosphere Monday night against, you know, a hot team, Buffalo Bills. Uh, it was incredible. So, um, obviously, we know we have a tough matchup coming up this weekend. Uh, or not this weekend, we're actually, you know, on Monday. But it's going to be incredible atmosphere. It's, you know, similar. You know, hopefully we don't have to be in that same situation where we have to make a goal line stop. But uh, I would expect this game to really be uh, highly competitive. And, uh, you know, emotion is going to be high. And it's it's going to be fun. It's one of those games we look forward to playing. Uh, John Garner. Hey Kevin, um, curious um, whether, whether you thought that the uh, the defense in the second half perhaps took the foot off the, the gas a, a little bit uh, against the Giants after being up and, and kind of along those same lines. Um, is there a need going in this week to sort of kind of reclaim that that pride in the in the run stopping department after after what the Giants did there in the second half? Well, to answer your first question, I don't think we let the let our foot off the gas at all. I just think that. You know, we just didn't execute our defense as well enough in the second half. We obviously uh, played really well in the first half, made them earn everything. And then first two drives of, well, actually the first play come out of halftime, give a huge run, a few plays later they score. And then on the second drive, I think it was two or three plays and then a bomb, you know, bomb over top of our heads and now the game is tied up. So, and then I think after that, you know, the Giants, they kept going to the same, uh, you know, they kept pulling two guys and, it kind of got us, you know, misaligned. And I think all those things is correctable and those things we will correct this week. But I, you know, I don't think it was anything like we let our foot off the gas. Um, obviously, uh, when you're talking about our type of defense and the way we want to play defense, we, you know, we have to stop the run. So that's definitely a pride thing. That's something that we, you know, something that we really uh, pride ourselves in and we didn't do that well enough. So uh, we're not going to be able to be a great defense if we don't stop the run. So that's obviously something we have to get back to uh, being dominant in the run game. Uh, Jim. And KB talked a little bit about the Bills, you know, at the start, but just what kind of a challenge with Allen, you know, with Diggs, with with some of their offensive weapons are you guys going to see on Monday night? Uh, I mean, obviously, Josh Allen, top quarterback in the league, top three, top five, however you want to put him, order doesn't matter. He's definitely up there. He's gotten so much better ever since his first year. When I remember we played him back in 2018 uh, to where he is now. You know, he's definitely up there. You know, he's probably going to be up there in the MVP races and things like that. So he's a great talent, a guy that's obviously definitely not afraid to, you know, tuck his head down and tuck the ball and take off and try to run somebody over. Um, he, he's, he's a great passer. He's a great quarterback. Uh, as far as their skill, guys, we obviously know Stephon Diggs, one of the better receivers in the league. Uh, he has great route craft. Um, he's going to be he's highly competitive, a guy who loves football. You know, Davis, he's going to be stretching the defense over the top. Isaiah McKenzie, who actually in previous years was a guy that was kind of just running a bunch of jet motions and jet sweeps, just kind of get the ball in his hands. But now he's the slot guy uh, with Cole Beasley being gone. And James Crowd, I played him a few times. He's a really good slot receiver, real savvy vet, good route runner. Uh, but Dawson Knox is a very athletic tight end. You know, he just got paid. Um, they're going to use him in a lot of different ways. Uh, and he's going to try to run away from you. He has really good speed. And uh, so, like I said, they have, he has a lot of weapons to be able to throw the ball to. Um, I feel like every game is probably because I don't feel like they got Dawson Knox super involved last game. So I'm pretty sure they're going to have some stuff for him this game. So, uh, like I said, he has a lot of guys they can throw the ball to. But obviously, their running backs as well, Devin Singletary, uh, Moss, those guys run really hard. And obviously, the rookie, uh, Cooks, um, he fumbled one time. I think he ran the ball, fumbled. They didn't really put him back in there. But I expect him to get some carries as well. So it's going to be like a three headed monster. They're all going to use those guys and run the ball with all, with all three of them. Uh, Terry? 
Kevin, what do you expect the environment to be like uh, in the stadium on Monday night? Obviously, a lot of expectations with the Bills, and you guys have had their number the last couple of years. Uh, how important overcome and hang in and, you know, weather that first little storm uh, uh, in the ballgame? Well, I think it's going to be electric. I think it's going to have a college, uh, like a big time college football game feel. Um, and that's kind of like how their town is, is a college town. You know, if it isn't the Bills or University of Buffalo, you know, that, you know, that's kind of as far as sports teams, like that's what they have up there. So uh, the whole city's probably going to be shut down for this game on Monday night. It's going to be incredible, especially talking about our offense. We're going to be really good with their operation and making sure that they're not you know, a bunch of false stars and stuff. It's going to have to be clean. Uh, but I think, you know, when you're looking at those type of atmospheres, the way that you kind of quiet the crowd down is go out there and make plays. And the same thing for us on defense, go out there and get turnovers, uh, make them earn everything. Don't give up any big plays over the top, uh, not allowing any big plays in the run game. That's how you kind of quiet the crowd down and kind of get everything on a level playing field. Uh, Teron? KB, for you, like when you're going through preparation, how much do things change when you're facing a team with a number one receiver versus a team that has kind of like a committee approach? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, looking at the Buffalo Bills, we watched a ton of Buffalo Bills going into this Giants game because where Brian Dayball was. So I'm still going to be, obviously, a lot of stuff is fresh in my mind, but even just watching the Rams game, a lot of stuff that we was looking at throughout last week for the Bill, I mean, for the Giants, it showed up on this game as well. And so, obviously, like you said, man, knowing a guy like Diggs, we're going to have to make sure we know who he is. He's, And that's one thing that usually they just line him up on that backside and isolate him on different routes. Uh, watching him against the Rams, they line him up, you know, a lot differently. They put him in jet motions and, and yeah. ran him down the field on routes. So he's a great receiver. And obviously, he is the number one, but at the end of the day, we have to know what Davis is doing on the other side. We have to make sure that he's not taking the top off the defense. And uh, and obviously, like you said, Dawson Knox is a really good tight end, too. So um, it is a little different as far as when you have a number one receiver. But at the same time, uh, as a defense, I don't think we can necessarily just be chasing, uh, OK, we have to double team or triple team this guy and because they have so many other weapons out there. We can't just leave these other guys one on one. I mean, and that's the way the game is. When you have that many guys, skilled players, Guys got to win at one on one matchups, and that's really what it's going to boil down to. Uh, Chris Harris, Kevin, <clears throat> excuse me, Kevin. Over the last couple of years, you guys have had a knack of coming back from a loss and playing really well, and especially against teams that you're underdogs against going into. What do you think the reason is for that? Well, I think for the most part, we're usually always underdogs. It's not a lot of t not of games, especially against you know these type of matchups where we're going to be picked to win. So we're usually going to be underdogs in a lot of situations. But when you talk about coming off a loss, I think that, you know, we're just critical with ourselves when we lose. It's not like, you know, even when we win, we're critical. But when we lose, we're highly critical of ourselves. And we're a type of team. Like, cause like I said, we have – I know the type of guys we have in our locker room. Um, guys want to get stuff corrected. We're going to fix things that are correctable. And one thing about it is, like, the effort and the finish and all the stuff that Brady preaches, that's never going to change. So – uh, the effort is always going to be there, but the little small stuff, the X's and those things, we correct those things and we go back there, we go back out there and line up and we're always going to go out there with confidence. We're not going to feel like because we lost one game, you know, it's the end of the world or we can't beat these other teams. Like that is always going to be our mentality. Uh, Jim. And KB, I guess on, on the, on your offensive side of the ball, you're not surprised at some of the success Kyle Phillips had right out of the gate. And did you see him after the game? It seemed like he was pretty hard on himself for the muffin the punt and felt like he could have done better. I'm sure every every rookie, um, you know, adjusts to a new new world in the NFL. But did you, did you get a chance to talk to him? Yeah, I did. Um, Kyle, he's he's a competitor. I spoke spoke about him during training camp. Really good route runner. He showed that, you know, during the game. And obviously he showed a little flash a little bit in preseason, his pump return ability, and he showed it in the game. So it's good to see that translate from the preseason to the regular season. But, you know, when you're a rookie, you're a first player, when you, you know, you mess up, you muff a punt or you might screw up a route or drop a pass or something like that, you kind of feel like it's just the end of the world. And then, um, just me talking to him, letting him know, like, hey, you did some really great things during the game and you just got to continue to build on those things. But obviously, you know, the muck punts and those things you try to eliminate, you know, but at the end of the day, um, you don't want to look at it like the, the glass is half empty. The glass is definitely half full for Kyle Phillips. Uh, Teresa. 
Kevin, this is going to be the fifth straight year that uh, Titans and the Bills have played uh, and third straight in prime time. What is the rivalry like, uh, the familiarity? Do, 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 you te- do you like the Bills? Uh, is there hate between these teams? Is, or is it just, as you mentioned, you expect what's going to be a high-quality game on when, when these teams meet? No, I think it's a respect thing. Um, the way both teams, us and the Bills, the way we play, um, especially on defense and offense, guys play hard. You know, Josh Allen, he plays hard. Their running backs run hard. Uh, Diggs plays hard. Like, I think that's just the entire team, and I think that's what makes the matchups exciting because, you know, this isn't like two divas going against you. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are two uh, blue-collar cities, two blue-collar teams, and I think we represent that uh, on, on the football field. So, uh, that's why you don't see too many blowouts when we, when we play each other. I mean, obviously, I know the 2020 year we beat them, but at the end of the day, uh, usually these games are close. And um, because, like I said, at the end of the day, neither team is going to quit regardless of what the score is. Uh, Sam? Kevin, that uh, underdog mentality, constantly being viewed an underdog in some of these bigger games, is that something that you guys really like to relish an opportunity here to maybe prove some people wrong and embrace that underdog mindset going into these big games? I guess it's just something that we're just used to. Um, You know, I always feel like, because like I said, since I've been here, we've always been the underdog. And I would rather, I don't know, I guess in in whatever scenario you like to look at it, but I'd rather be the one chasing the one that's being chased. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's usually how it goes. And I think that, um guys understand that and you know I feel like you just kind of go into games with a different mentality when you know that you're not really picked to win uh it's like not necessarily David and Goliath but you know I'm saying the little man versus the big guy you know what I'm saying so we I think just as a team we just understand that role and you know we just try to you know play the best we can uh two more we'll let you go uh Jim and KB, you've talked about some of those past matchups. You know, after what happened the last couple of years in Nashville, you feel like those guys in that locker room are probably looking for some payback. Say it again. Repeat the question. My bad. I, I said you talked about some of these past matchups with the Bills. I guess if you're in that locker room, do you think some of those guys are looking for some payback over what happened uh, in Nashville the past couple of years? Yeah, I mean, like I feel like, you know, the matchup has kind of went back and forth a little bit. Um, I'm sure that they obviously want to get payback for sure. I mean, they just started off the season hot, beat the Rams pretty bad, and they've already probably been watching film. They played Thursday night, so they already been breaking down the film and kind of got their game plans together. But I guarantee you that's the message uh, in their building right now. They're probably playing that play uh, when Jeff made the goal line stop. I think that, you know, with those with that type of team, and I know the mentality of their team, they're not just leaning on that win against the Rams. They're going to come out here and – especially Monday night in front of their home crowd, they're going to be super amped up and uh, excited to play us. So we have to bring that same type of energy. Uh, Chris Harris. Yeah, KB, you touched on uh, um, Josh Allen just briefly and said he's probably, you know, going to be in the race for the MVP. In your opinion, what makes him so good? What does he do so well? Yeah, I mean, he started with his arm. I mean, he has a, he has a rocket, he has a cannon. He can make every and any throw on the field. I think he has extreme confidence in his arm. Um, and obviously his running ability. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to slide a lot. He's going to try to put his head down and run you over. Uh, and he just has that, you know, I feel like he just has that little personality, has that swag to him when he's out there. Like, he feels like he's the best player on, on the field. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be a great challenge for us. And I love playing against Josh Allen. I think, like I said, he's a great competitor. And uh, you always want to go up against the best in the league. So, uh, but like I said, I think he's one of the better players in the league. Uh, Jim's going to squeeze one last one in here. Yeah, I'm squeezing one more. You you talk about college atmosphere. I know you play in some rocket stadiums, uh, Kevin. What what what's the worst thing you usually hear when opposing teams are giving giving you guys the business coming in or out or when you're on the sideline? Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like I was sad when we played in Buffalo 2018. It was my only time playing in Buffalo, and that crowd was obviously it was intense. I mean, because I think they shot every time they have a home game, regardless, but. Um, I remember just driving in, you know, you riding on the bus and fans are shooting you the bird and all that good stuff. And, you know, then after the game, after we end up losing, which was a, a close game, uh, it was kind of like the same thing. And then you see like all the broken tables and stuff like that. I mean, it's trash everywhere in the parking lots or whatever. So um, but usually uh, you hear a lot of stuff sometimes as a player, especially before a game or you try to drown all that stuff out. But uh, like I said, I definitely think Buffalo fans are going to be super intense and uh 
yeah, they're going to let us hear it for sure. Uh, Teresa, you want to get us started? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Ben. Uh, for teams that aren't in the same division, uh, this is the fifth straight year you all have played the Bills. Does it almost feel like there is a, I mean, what's the rivalry like? Is it like your division rivals? Do you know each other so well? Or is it just you see each other so much? What's the level of hate between these teams? <laughs> They're good teams. And, you know, we've had some close games with them over the past four or five years. And it's come down to the wire in all those games. So we know what we have um, coming up. They're a good team, and you have to go play in that environment. So we know we got to be ready, and we got to we got to bring it. Uh, Jim, Ben, I guess what's it been like? I guess getting over Sunday and then turning the focus to Buffalo as uh, after the result, maybe not being what you wanted in Week One. Yeah, I um, never want to start season off like that. I'm so close and. Just didn't come out how we wanted to at the end. It takes a, a Sunday and Monday to kind of put that to bed, um, watching the tape and get all that done. Now we're moving on to Buffalo, and you know we got a big challenge this week going on the road there on a Monday night. So all our focus is there. Um, you got to put that one to bed so it don't linger and it don't mess up this week's preparation. Uh, John. Conan, are you there? Yeah, long time. Sorry about that. Um, hey, Ben, I wanted to ask you about the um, what you thought of the run game uh, blocking uh, on Sunday and also along those lines, how important will it to be to kind of be able to maintain possession against the Bills with the uh, with the run game? Yeah, um, we got to be better in the run game. We got to have some clean looks and – one person there, one person there. We got to be 11 guys. It takes all 11 guys to run the ball in this league. You know, if one guy's not doing his job right on that play, the play is usually dead. So we got to be together as a unit, as a whole offense. To, everybody's tied together. And definitely, um, Bills have explosive offense, good on defense. Um, they've been together for a while. Um, so you know what we have on defense. They're, they're as solid as they come. And we know the more we can control the clock and do all of that, it's better for us. Uh, Terry? Man, it seemed like the pass protection was pretty solid uh, on Sunday, uh, keeping Ryan upright. Uh, how did uh, Nick and Aaron do, especially, uh, you know, their first real assignments in there as, as starters? Yeah, um, that was definitely a positive coming out of the game. Um, but you can get humbled really quick in this league, so you got to put that to bed and come out. We know we got a challenge next week. They got a, a really good front in the bill, so you can't um, – be praised on that and this week come out there and not bring your A game. So we know our task is. We know their front is one of the best in the league. So we, we know our task this week. And this week would definitely be a box. We don't have to come out and bring it every every day and get ready for this week's game. Uh, Teron? Yeah, Ben, with, uh, with Coach Vrabel, you know, being a defensive-minded head coach, how, how much – of that do you think carries over to the offense and just the physical tone that you guys want to set uh, in games against these teams? Yeah, Rebo does a great job of being on both sides of it. He's always in our meetings also. But just uh, the program we run, the mentality we have here, we want to be physical. We want to uh, – effort and finish is our staple here. We want to be a, a team that can finish and win in the fourth quarter. So he definitely has that as a as a team. Um, how he's built it here. So you can definitely see his mentality is definitely um, he wants to be a physical team. He wants to um, dominate the line of scrimmage, and that's what we try to do here. Uh, Chris Harris? Yeah, ben, my question was about their defensive front. What do you see out of those personnel? Yeah, um, they're very talented there, um, inside and out. Um, no matter it's not – they don't have a weakness there. Um, they're big. Um, they're athletic. Um, they play hard. And that's the teams that play out. You see them on, um, in the playoffs every year like that because they, they're fundamentally sound. They do the right job, and they're flying around everywhere. So those are the teams you see later on in the playoffs, teams like that who are very disciplined and play hard. Uh, ben Arthur? Ben, at, at, at first glance, I mean, I, I know it's only been one game, but how is maybe Vaughn Miller impacted – um, that front for them, and, and maybe what's the balance of accounting for him, maybe needing to double him 
at times, but also knowing that, as you said, it, it's a very deep uh, defensive front that they have for Buffalo. Yeah, Vaughn's a great player. Um, no matter what team he's been on the past years, um, he's always productive. He's a guy that you know where he's at in every situation. He can impact the game, run fast. He's a guy that you always have a plan for and know where he's at. Um, so he's a great player and he has our utmost respect and he definitely changes the attitude of a defense. Uh, Jim Watt. And Ben, I guess last several times you've gone up against these Bills, you were teammates with Roger Saffold, David Quisenberry. What, what's it like now knowing they're with the Bills? How much do you keep in touch with them? How much they seem to be enjoying Buffalo from what you know? Yeah, they're de they're definitely our friends. Um, we talk to them all the time. Um, great guys, play a lot of good ball for us here. Um, help us um, win a lot of games. Um, so we're all, it's, it's, it's bittersweet to see guys go, but we want to see them this week and hopefully we come out on our end and get the, uh, give them a hug after the game and wish them well. Uh, Teresa? Ben, to follow up on that, when you have somebody who's been a teammate, how much can somebody like a Roger or a Quisenberry kind of tell the uh, his new teammates that, uh, you know, any of your habits, or is this just something that guys have to do that work on their own? And, uh, you know, can, can they be in essentially double agents in a way they know you so well, or is it just oversold when guys change teams as much as they do? Uh, they definitely can give you some pointers and stuff like that, but for them knowing us, I, I know that aspect of it too. So we go through the call changing and stuff like that. So we understand that. But when you play in an environment like the the Bill Stadium, not much is heard anyway. Their fans are really loud. So so we can go with that aspect too. So they have to hear it through the crowd. Uh, 